Good afternoon. Um, my name is, uh, my mother named me Patricia Catherine McCabe, and I'm from Taos, New Mexico, in the southwest United States. And I'm from the Diné people. And uh, so I'll introduce myself formally that way. She'e'iya, tachi inishli, aro ashi inbashishchi, ma'irish gejne dashe nale, tauschi daushiche, akwatao asani inishli. And so I'm telling you about my clans. We get our clans from our mothers. And uh, those clans that I named are referring to places on the earth very specific places on the earth that, um, that my lineage has a uh, relationship with. And uh, I always like speaking my language over here in this part of the world. I feel like the earth responds to that uh, ancient vibration when I get to speak my language here. So I appreciate that opportunity. So I see us all traveling this road together. My, my clan grandfather, who uh, crossed over last year, he said, um, here we are, holy earth surface walkers, walking, walking, dazzled by creation, coming upon temptation. <laughs> and so that's, that's our story of who we are and how we find ourselves at this moment. Holy earth surface walkers, dazzled by creation, coming upon temptation. And so I'd like us to stand up, if you would. Give me another chance to move just a little bit. I'm going to sing a song, because it helps me organize my thoughts. Um, and it's a traveling song. So if you feel like having a little movement with it, that's fine. And if you feel like you're getting the hang of the song, you can sing, too. Some of you in this room have heard this song and know it a little bit. you for a moment to close your eyes as I make a radical proposition. 
another radical proposition. The first was, you are a holy earth surface walker. Now here's the second one. You were born into beauty as beauty for joyful life. That's the truth. So now that you know what's coming, let's see if you can open up your body a little bit to receive that. Because maybe, you're, maybe you're, your cells rolling around right now, I've never heard anybody say that, so let's let, them, let's let them hear it. You were born into beauty as beauty for joyful life. That's the truth. So, I am a holy earth surface walker, life bringer, life bearer, and I have the authority to speak on behalf of life. I have the authority to ask my community if what we are engaged in is placing life at the center. Is what we're doing here placing life at the center? And I'll leave you to answer that question. But it's, but it's my authority to, to raise that question here. So, uh, my people say that we come from original beauty. We didn't come from original sin. We came from original beauty. And that orientation is pretty radical also in this modern world. <laughs> and when somebody um, finds themselves creating actions that work, are working against life, which could be working against an individual or working against uh, a water or something, then part of our methodology for healing is first, we don't pathologize. Which is a very favorite thing to do in modern culture. We say that this person um, is in need of being restored to the truth. And here's where I love Osho, Osho the Zen master saying, he said, you know, we have not to seek the truth, we have only to remove the lie and when we remove the lie, then the truth stands in all of its radiant beauty. So it's a very beautiful approach because that's also talking about original beauty. So there's so much has been said today that I resonate with and I so appreciate hearing everybody one of the things that really struck me was about this feeling body, and it's something that I've been working with. It's something that I've been working with in one-to-one -one conversations, and sometimes in group conversations. And if I were, had done it in this group, I would have had to stop people over and over again, but they only had 15 minutes, so that wouldn't have been very productive, because I would have had to say, hold on a second. You just went so far ahead that my feeling body had no chance at all to catch up. And so when I get bombarded that way over and over with all this information, um, I'm not going to be involved in act activism for a few days because I got to let my feeling center catch up with what we just did. Otherwise, as was pointed out, I might be acting from a place of all this emotion, my grief, my rage, my shame. So I've been really working on that, with, especially in one-on-one -on -one conversations, when I'm getting the, the fact machine gun. Bam, 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 bam. I say, whoa, hold on a second. 
How do you feel when you're saying that? And it's usually, so maybe it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a combative thing to say, because <laughs> inevitably there's this, this stagger back. What do you mean, how do I feel when I'm saying that? Well, how do, how do, what kind of feelings do you have around that? And as soon as I say that, the conversation slows and the conversation drops. And to me, that's where I want to work in my activism. There are many traditions that say that things begin on an energetic level long before they ever come into the physical. And we might say that we begin with a prayer with everything that we do. We want to bring that in and acknowledge that, right? So I was really appreciating our, our, our talk about this feeling place, intuition, intuition as being, you know, thought being informed by feeling. And what I would add to that is to say that, so one, I have to have some awareness of my own feeling body in this process. But not only that, what I feel like, you know, as I listen to you, this is not the way I would have said it before I came here today, but what I feel like in indigenous culture that I participate in, what we are doing is we are not only becoming aware of our own feeling center, but we be, try to do our best to become aware of the feeling center of the larger community, meaning that sacred hoop of life in which every life form has a place. All your beautiful daffodils, your seagulls, your buzzard. I've seen several stags in my journey since I've been here. Um, everybody. So, so it's, it's for me as a member of the hoop I'm not the whole hoop. I'm a member of a community, of a hoop that is so interrelated and so, uh, well, as Thich Nhat Hanh said, what well, an interbeing that I, that I can't, for me to just check in with my feeling center, <laughs> I think that is creating more of the same problem because this, this, this idea of dominion says I can be a separate thing in charge of and over everything else's sovereignty. So right away I have to drop into what is the feeling center of the community, this interbeing. I love that word because it's talking about a singularness. What is the feeling center of this interbeing? The flying ones, swimming ones, creepy crawling ones, four-legged ones, standing nation, stone people. Holy Mani wa chosen ne wakam. So I have to take into account and I open myself up to hear that conversation. And then for myself, I believe there are spiritual helpers here. They've been here a long time. This land has some. All lands have them, I believe. Every land I've ever been to has them. My land has them. And so I open up to that also. And this isn't something I was born into. I was born into fierce academics. Uh, my, my grandparents and parents were taken into the Dutch Christian Reformed Missionary Boarding School. So I was raised in the church. So it's not like I just got handed all this. I had to relearn it. So I know it's doable. But I'm learning how to open that up. And what arrives, as Bio referred to, he was kind of breaking up right there, but I, I, I resonated with it. He said, even if it appears like madness, which indigenous culture has appeared like madness to most of the world for a long time. Not most of the world, but some of the world for a long time. And yet, what I would propose is, if sustainability is the highest and most sought after technology on the planet, who should we be talking to? We should be talking to those peoples who've known how to live in some kind of health, harmony, happiness for extended period of time, 1,000 years, 2,000 years, 5,000 years. So maybe their methodologies and their science is not madness. Maybe they didn't just get lucky. Maybe they have a system. 
So for me, what I'm discovering in my journey back home is this opening. And the logic that comes from the earth and the logic that comes from the land is not mirrored very much by the human logic that has evolved that we live in now. So it's going to look pretty wacky to a lot. <laughs> and yet, for me, I feel like we, we don't know. I went to the New Story Summit. The clock is not running, by the way, so I'm just going to try to end here soon. Um, but I went to the New Story Summit at Findhorn. Maybe some of you were there. I know some of you were there. And the idea was we need to try to tell a new story from this point forward. If we bring everybody together, people from all walks of life, 52 nations, what are we gonna, what, what can we say about what this new story, what are the elements of this new story? And so we had a lot of indigenous people there, and so of course right away, um, we have this clash, which was all part of the process, it was perfect, of the indigenous people saying, do we really need a new story? Is that what we're really trying to do? Or do we need to go back to an old story? And so, you know, what I was told by saying, by opening myself up to another kind of logic, and I inquire from the earth, I inquire from this larger community, capital C, the interbeing that I am and that we are and that we are, what kind of cause and effect can I participate in here that would make sense to, bring, to restore myself, to remove the lie that the truth can stand in all of its radiant beauty? And what I heard was, rather than try to tell a new story, you would be better off going back and retelling the old story. And if you retell the old story, it will automatically change the trajectory into the future. That's a different kind of logic. So I thought about it. Why would, why would that be better? And I don't know. That wasn't a, some, an information that was given to me from the, in, this interbeing, this larger community. But I suspect it's because this interbeing is saying, really? You think you're equipped to tell the new story from this point forward? We're not sure about that. But what you might be equipped to do is to go back and have that wonderful 2020 hindsight in being able to see where you took the wrong fork, where you have committed something that goes against the beauty, something that goes against the interbeing. Consider that. Address that with your heart. Address that with your feeling center. Address that in ceremony. And so that's my activism today, is, is to summon that wisdom from the interbeing. And what it's telling me to do, I mean, the beauty of it is that I trust it and, it, and it's so connected to everywhere on the planet that I don't really have to worry so much about all the things that I used to worry about being a part of nonprofit organizations and et cetera. Not to say that I think everybody needs to run out of a nonprofit or an NGO, because uh, I think we do need that. But I also think that this practice of, of, of and really understanding our position here <laughs> and consulting with this interbeing, even within these organizations, is crucial. Because she knows what to do. She knows what to do. We have to consult with her in my book. I have to consult with her. So I, my activism is now following her. And she does my PR. I didn't ask to come here today, did I? She does my social media. She's got the hookup, man, <laughs> worldwide. And so my effort isn't so much about those things. She does the funding, too, by the way. Her resources are unlimited. And so it, it, it puts my work and way into a whole different place. 
I'll stop here and say that, you know, what I say to the young, to really young people when I'm talking to high school people, I'd say two things. I say one, I say, you've got to want your life. First of all, you've got to want it like that. And if you're not in that place of wanting your life like that, that's your first activism. You cannot preach about life when you don't want your life. But the second thing, you know, I say to them is, as a human being, anything you do that is moving towards life automatically makes you a revolutionary on behalf of our species. Because right now, the sum total of our actions as a species is not headed towards life. So you can pick up anywhere you want. There's plenty of work to go around. We don't have to fight over it. And it makes our compass a little easier to see. So that has to do with our clothing, our, our mode of travel, all of it. We can be thinking about it. Where am I at with that? Today I'm doing pretty good. I use that plastic cup, you know, but it's just a measure. And with original beauty, you know, I was told to stay out of that shame. We are first world nation sitting here, being able to sit in this room and contemplate in this kind of leisure. There are places that are not capable of having this kind of leisure, to have this kind of conversation. That impact has already engulfed them. So what I was told about that as first world nation is don't be ashamed of where you're at, but consider that perhaps you are here for a reason. There is something that you can do from this place if you can recognize where you are at. So open up to that interbeing and say, how do I find myself here in the lap of luxury where I get to choose? Do I want sparkling water? Do I want mineral water? Do I want vegan? Do I want organic? Do I want that's incredible wealth on the planet right now. There are fish and birds and four-legged ones that have no option like that. There are human beings, brothers and sisters around the world who can't find a drink. And we begin to lose our mental capacity. So our species' ability to address beauty is diminishing. But you have that capacity right now. Why? Why? I believe that it's for a beautiful purpose. And that's something worth celebrating. And something worth being, in, being that traveler together for. So, so thank you. Thank you.